All right, this is video four for your chapter 5b bonus assignment. We talked about bonds and whether bonds were polar or nonpolar. And then we talked about molecules and whether molecules were polar or nonpolar and what kind of forces happened between molecules, intermolecular forces. Now we're gonna talk about properties of pro uh, properties of molecules depending upon their intermolecular forces, okay? Because the strength of a molecule's intermolecular force affects many other properties of the molecule. Things like melting point, boiling point, viscosity, solubility, and surface tension. Okay, so question 22. In general, how does the strength of intermolecular forces affect boiling points and melting points? Okay, well, boiling is from a liquid going to a gas and melting is a solid going to a liquid. Okay, so if you have a liquid, for example, and it's held together, all the molecules in that liquid are held together quite tightly because they have strong intermolecular forces, it's gonna be harder to get them to boil. Okay, so as intermolecular force strength goes up, so as intermolecular forces get stronger, melting point and boiling points are also gonna get higher because you're gonna have to put in more heat to turn a liquid into a gas to break those intermolecular forces or to make a solid turn into a liquid to break the intermolecular forces holding the solid together. The stronger they're held together, the harder it's gonna be to separate them, okay? 23. Water and dihydrogen selenide have very similar formulas, H2O and H2SE. However, they have different, very different boiling points. Which one has a higher boiling point? And I gave you a hint. What kind of IMF does water experience? What kind of IMF does H2SE experience and which is stronger? All right, well, water has hydrogen bonding, which is the strongest. H2SE, if you had to draw it, it would look like this. So it's polar. We've got lone pairs on that central atom. So this molecule is polar. So it's going to experience dipole-dipole forces. But water has H bonded to O, which is going to give it hydrogen bonding. And hydrogen bonding is stronger than dipole-dipole which is why water has a higher boiling point. So I'll say stronger IMF, therefore higher boiling point, okay? All right, viscosity means it, things don't want to flow. So resistance to flow, all right? Things like maple syrup or uh, motor oil, uh, honey, you know, things that are really thick and viscous, viscosity is the word, okay? So the stronger the intermolecular forces are, the more viscosity something is going to have. So same idea, as the intermolecular forces get stronger, viscosity goes up. Things hold on to each other more tightly, and then they don't want to flow. You try to pour honey across the counter, it's gonna move pretty slowly because those molecules are holding on together very tightly because they have strong intermolecular forces. Okay, number 26. This one's about solubility. Okay, in other words, how well do things dissolve? All right, so when we say like dissolves like, what that means is in terms of intermolecular forces, it means polar molecules can dissolve polar, can mix, I'll say can mix with polar because they have the same kind of intermolecular force and nonpolar can mix with nonpolar because they have similar intermolecular forces. So similar intermolecular forces mix together. That's what this means, like dissolves like. All right, 27, how do intermolecular forces prevent oil with lots of carbon-hydrogen bonds and water 
with an OH bond from mixing. Well, CH bonds are very nonpolar. OH bonds are very polar. I mean, if you did the electronegativity thing on here, C is 2.5, H is 2.1. That bond is nonpolar. So nonpolar oil is not like polar water. So the intermolecular forces are different and it keeps them from mixing. All right, 28. Chlorine, bromine, and iodine all have the same intermolecular force. And I hope in your head, you're saying, oh, London dispersion. Chlorine, bromine, and iodine. All right, so they go down that column on the periodic table like this. Chlorine is the smallest. Iodine is the biggest of these three. They're all nonpolar. They all only have London dispersion forces. Which one's a solid and which one's a liquid and which one's a gas? Well, this one is gonna be a solid because if they're all nonpolar, the larger molecule has more electrons. So that is gonna have the strongest London dispersion forces, which can hold it together as a solid. Chlorine is the smallest. So it is gonna be a gas because gases have very weak uh, London dispersion forces. So I'll say weakest London dispersion forces and then bromine is a liquid. Okay, it's in the middle. All right, what is surface tension? Surface tension means um, <clears throat> how well does a liquid uh, molecules, how well do liquid molecules stick together? So water has a very high surface tension. I showed you that video of the water bug, okay? Where if this is the surface of the lake and those waters are just totally holding on to each other, that bug couldn't even break through. The bug tried to run across and it could, okay? All right, the relationship between different types of IMFs and the surface tension they will have. All right, so same idea, okay, as IMF, goes up, surface tension also goes up. Okay, how does soap affect the surface tension? I'll write this down here somewhere. Okay, soap has polar parts and non-polar parts. Polar parts. So it disrupts the surface tension of the water, okay? So it breaks up, it gets in between these water molecules and busts them up. All right, so soap can wreck, wrecks water surface tension by disrupting the hydrogen bonding between the water molecules. All right, I hope this helps. Um, let me know when you're done with it and we'll set up your test retake.